right. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We have a very extraordinary guest today, somebody I um, have been very much looking forward to not only interviewing, but it's important, um, the whole story behind my guest today, because this man, Greg Gorman, is the one who discovered me Um for Playboy and changed the entire trajectory of my life. So I'm going to do a little intro on Greg Gorman. Greg, okay. thank you so much for being here. Well, I did this because I wanted to see you. It's been a while. Yeah. I think I saw you at my 70th birthday party the last time, and we've talked a few times since then. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. And I think it's, um, I mean, it's an important part of my story, obviously. I don't, I mean, people obviously know, like, I was discovered, but I don't think they know the whole background. So mm. we'll get into it. I'm going to um, give a little background to our audience on um, who you are and okay. what you've done. and then, Let me know, and then I'll know who I am, too. <laughs> and then you'll know who you are, too. <laughs> so, Greg Gorman is a world-renowned photographer, um, and as I said, um, the one who discovered me at the age of 18. Uh, for decades, Greg has, has been acknowledged and revered for his contribution contribution to the world of photography and um, has received many prestigious awards, the Lucy Awards, is that how you say it? Lucy, Lucy Awards. Lucy yes. Awards for portraiture, and more recently by the Professional Photographers of America, where he received the Lifetime Achievement Award. That and translates to old age. Does it? <laughs> no, know. but Lifetime Achievement, yeah. I mean, I mean... That's well deserved, and, yeah. and absolutely, you should be in yeah, that. You're kind. <laughs> um, and then another one of your passions, and that you continue to do to this day, is um, you are definitely one of the most sought after, sought after speakers in the photographic community, and um, you share your expertise and hands-on uh, photography workshops around the world, which is actually how we met in Santa Fe. That's right. Way, way, way back. And that's where I actually started uh, workshops with Reed uh, Callahan in Santa Fe. That's where. I- he brought me down there, and that's when I realized, you know, this is kind of my passion now after 50 years of taking pictures. I love education and teaching, giving something back. Yeah, that's what you thrive on. Yeah, that's what I do. That and fishing. <laughs> that, that and fishing. Talk about the way we were rather than <laughs> doing a lot of commercial work these days. Yeah. So I thought it would be fun um, before we get into the whole story about how you and I, um, our chance meeting and, and what transpired from there, is to talk a little bit about the Barbie twins for two reasons. You worked a lot with the Barbie twins, and the Barbie twins were also featured on my cover of the January 1993 issue, which was one of the best sellers of all time. And they were a- true characters, Echo. You know, I loved. I had no idea what to expect. I knew they wanted me to shoot uh, them for Playboy. I'd done, you know, I didn't shoot that much for Playboy. I did a half a dozen covers for them, probably mainly kind of high-profile celebrities. But okay. uh, when those gals came in, it was like t- two girls from Mars, and uh, <laughs> I fell in love with them. You know, uh, they were both v- had great sense of humor, which mm-hmm. for me is so important it's hard to shoot someone that's humor impaired yeah, and these definitely. two giant storms came in and they were fantastic you know we had fun they didn't take themselves seriously which is what i loved about them it made the shoot a lot easier right and and playing with them and playing off of them made us for a fun shoot because when you're shooting somebody and they're butt naked in front of your camera you know you get too fucking serious yeah you know it becomes too heavy and uh, yeah. we kept it light and and laughing and joking most of them like kind of like when you and i shot well i mean I, that's that's part of the deal when you're working with you you, I mean, all I remember is nonstop laughter, yeah. like consistently. And Shane, Barbie. you can't take this shit too seriously. You know? <laughs> You're pumping up the volume on people, you know, <laughs> making them somebody that they hope they can appear to be, but aren't really in real life. You true. know, it's another another story. True, you know? true. And especially like in in the whole field of like nude photography. I mean, I know for myself, especially when I started at 18, I was absolutely terrified. But Shane had uh, shared some stories with me too, that because of their eating disorder that they had at the time, and they suffered severely from bulimia, they hated the way they looked and they didn't want to be naked. They didn't want to take their clothes off. And so she had shared with me that they were very, very difficult to work with, but that they loved, absolutely loved working with you because not only did you make them look incredible, but they- um, Thanks to damn good retouching. <laughs> Thanks to damn good retouching. <laughs> but their spirit and their, their kindred energy and it came across in their expressions in their life, and that's what was important in the pictures, yeah. So one thing that Shane said, I guess it was like along those lines, that they were just like, I'm fat, I don't look good, I don't want to take my clothes off. And you said, don't worry, I'll shoot you from Mars. 
<laughs> it'll look great. Did that mean the lens that you were shooting with? Or no, what I just was joke with them. I mean, you know, them... if I back up or reinforce our insecurities, we're never going to get anywhere. Exactly, so exactly. We kept it light, and I told them not to worry about it. We could chop it up in Photoshop and make it work, you know. And this was way before Photoshop, you know. Oh, true, I think, you yeah. know, we shot in the Middle Ages when I photographed them, and so there Real wasn't film. Photoshop. Mm -hmm. All film. Mm -hmm. no so digital. it was a hell of a lot harder than it is today. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know? Do you have a preference between um, digital and raw film? Well, you know, today everything is digital well, pretty much. Uh, you know, people still shoot film. I mean, I shoot digital rough. So I shoot very high ISOs. So there is a certain amount of noise and artifacting, even in the, at the high ISOs, to give it a little bit more proximity to film. Okay. Because, you know, film was never that precise, but it always had a much more beautiful, right. more integral look than digital. Digital is just two TV, you know, in right. many ways. But no, I mainly shoot all digital now for many reasons. The supply and demand, I can't get the papers, I can't get the films that I used to like to work with. Sure. Um, but, uh, you know, when I go back and look at my books and all that I've done, uh, I see that, you know, film just has a... a uh, an inherent look that's just much more real and tangible. That's that was my next question. You and I is, always shot film. Always yeah. is when when looking, there wasn't digital back then anyway. Right when looking at at your still previous, horse and buggy. Still still horse <laughs> and buggy. Yeah, I was going to ask when looking at your previous work. I mean, it, can, you definitely can see the difference between like raw film and digital. I mean, there is something to be said for it. It was you know unique in its own manner. And each um, each photographer that I've asked, they pretty much say the same thing as you yeah. yeah so a standard also you had to know what the hell you were doing back in the film days i mean today well, everything is automatic craft. auto focus yeah. auto exposure photoshop to fix your mistakes everybody has an iphone and a version of photoshop and they all think they're the next richard avedon which is a bunch of bullshit because right. they have no idea what the fuck they're doing most of the time so. right right exactly exactly so you shot the barbie twins a couple times for yeah playboy? i think i was trying to think you know my memory isn't so great anymore but yeah i shot him for playboy at least once and then I think we did a calendar one time at, at okay. one, one point. Okay. How did you, because um, I always thought this was interesting because it's through conducting all of these interviews for the podcast, um, it seems rare that an outsider photographer comes in and shoots, even for the celebrity pictorials. Like the one that I can remember was Herbert Cindy, uh, shooting Cindy Crawford. But how did you become involved with shooting for Playboy? Well, uh, with Marilyn Grabowski, who okay. I worked with very uh, closely, um, a lot of times when they would make a big financial deal with a celebrity for a cover, I think, I can't even remember who all I did. I know I did Sherry Belafonte and I did Robin Gibbons. Okay. And I think a couple other ones. And uh, the talent said, you know, well, here's the money deal. We're good with that. But we want Greg Gorman or, you know, in cases like with some of them, they wanted Herb Ritz or another photographer because they were comfortable working with him. Right. And that's true, you know, in, in all of our careers that we worked in, in the world of celebrity is that we had our stable of stars that we always worked with. And it was mainly because the star was more comfortable uh, with that particular photographer, and the photographer also knew how to photograph them better. Right. And so if, without them having to begin over with a photographer, particularly uh, a magazine like Playboy, where they are selling sex to a certain degree, um, where the sex is probably more important than the integral personality of the individual, mm -hmm. um, celebrities were more comfortable with people that knew that they know how to photograph them and make them look good yeah, of the neck, course, of course. Be besides below the neck. So right, that was right. a big reason. Right, yeah, that makes sense. And Shane Barbie had shared with me that um, after their first pictorial, which they were not happy with, they were not pleased with the way that the photos came out, and Shane demanded that you were the one to shoot their next issue. And, and then, of course, that ended up happening. Um, I thought that was um, was interesting. And that... Um, that re or that September ninety one issue, I think it was the first one that they were on. Um, it broke records by selling out in less than two weeks. So no, that, it's funny because it's Shane the one that's married to Ken Wall. Yeah, I always wanted to shoot Ken Wall. I was work I worked on a movie with Ken with Bette Midler. Okay, and he would never let I could never get him to do pictures with me, which is hysterical. I still to this day never shot him, met right. him. But we never photographed each other. I never photographed him, I should say. Huh. And he was the co-star of the movie with with Bet in one of the Bet's early movies. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Kind of funny. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know like his background too much, and like they live a very. Oh, he had done some pretty interesting movies actually now. back in the day. Yeah. Well, was he awful to you one time? Because no, Shane... he was never awful. He just wouldn't shoot with me. I, I really wanted to photograph. He was a handsome guy, and I wanted. To, I was excited to work with him. And he just and I was Bet's photographer. He just didn't really want to do it. I don't know. It was fun. but it's ironic because I worked with him. But he and I've never met actually, other ah, than you know on the set on for the set, two yeah. minutes, and he didn't really want to do pictures. Right, right, right. Well, um, Shane um, raves about 
about working with you, and it was absolutely like their favorite favorite experience ever. They just enjoyed well, they were fun because they had a great it. sense of humor. You know, that's why it was fun. Yeah, yeah. and it should be noted for our audience, um, especially for a younger generation that you who may or may not know who the Barbie twins are. So the Barbie twins were the like sex icons of the '90s. The 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 sexiest twins is what they called them. Um, Anyway, they were they were the it girls. Hef loved them. He um, he told them that they made Playboy a ton of money because their issues sold so much. So they had a very great relationship with Playboy and shot quite a bit. So Shane and Sia Barbie, that's who we are talking about. Um, and then my favorite quote that Shane said was, "She said I just felt so bad for Stephen Weta and for Gray Gorman because we were the twins from hell. We were divas with a capital D." And I was like, "Hey, it was your time, you know." You, you know, I kind of knew. Demand. I kind of knew where they were coming from, and I and you know we joked and teased about it, and I gave them shit when, when if something was yeah, crazy. Yeah, of course. But, you know, it kept it light, and they just you know you just didn't take anything too seriously, and we knew what we had to do. The job, well, here's the job. We got to make the pictures. We got to get the pictures. They got to right. look right. Right. I got to get some sort of a semblance of an image that I can go in and fix and post. Right. And and we did. You know. Right. And they were fun. I I didn't find them any more. I've had other people that were more difficult that were humor impaired. At least they had a sense of humor. So we were humor able to go impaired. There. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you've shot with everybody, Greg. I mean, it, it runs the gamut. Anybody you can imagine, celebrity well, wise, <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay, so we're gonna get into how you and I met, and this is a really interesting story. It's a funny story. It's okay. a we funny always, story. I always, I've told this story a million times, but I was actually, as you mentioned, in Santa Fe teaching one of my first workshops. Not one of my first, but right. in, in the mid early '90s, I guess. Uh-huh. And I was having dinner with my. Dear belated lost friend Kevin Lynch, who you knew very well, who yeah. has, uh, worked with me for about 25 years of my career, and I learned a lot from him, and vice versa, and right. a wonderful photographer in his yes. own right. Yes, uh, we were having dinner at Cafe Escalera, and I was in the midst of doing a bunch of work for German Playboy. That uh, Saskia Middleberg, who ultimately became my German agent, uh, had the idea back in the early days to hire you know more prolific, well-known personality photographers to shoot the spreads for Playboy rather than Playboy photographers. Right. And she brought in a lot of big names to, to shoot for the German Playboy magazine. And uh, she said to me, I had booked one gal, uh, Kim Snowden, mm-hmm. to go on a trip. She said, why don't you take a couple gals with you and knock out a couple covers for us? And I said, okay. So that was in the back of my mind. And one night I was having dinner, as you know now, at Cafe Escalera with Kevin and I don't know who else. And this is in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Santa Fe, New where Mexico. I'm from, where I grew up. And I was literally so, a month out of high school. I was 18 years I old. Was, uh, I was having dinner. And here I see this gorgeous creature walking across the room. <laughs> and I said to Kevin, my God, she's beautiful. I said, I'm going to go up and... and uh, speak to her and see if she wants to do Playboy. And so I think the first thing I said to you, I came up to you and I said, listen, I'm an openly gay person. I'm, this is not a come on, so yeah. don't think I'm trying to bed you down. I said, would you be interested? I'm shooting uh, some covers for German Playboy. Would you be interested in shooting a cover for German Playboy? And you said, no. Absolutely and, not. <laughs> and your mother said, yes, she would. <laughs> and yes. that's kind of how it began. And uh, and after that, it's been a love affair for many, many years. And we shot kind of all over the map. And yeah. we did a shoot at, at, at one point. At, at, at also a dear friend that passed away, Forrest Moses. Incredible home in mm-hmm. Santa Fe. And, mm-hmm. and we had a great shoot and got amazing pictures. I mean, it was literally like the next day we were up at your workshop. Shop and you had to set up this whole very private area for me with all the dividers, so you could literally test take, shots. Yeah, yeah. And I they were I think they were like Polaroids, if I recall right. You know, I, mean, I don't know. No, very we, yeah, minimal. Maybe, but it was quick. We shot some stuff. It was all film um, that yeah. we could send to uh, Saskia, right, to get this sign off, and they signed off on you obviously right away. It I was mean, immediate. It was, wasn't a question. Yeah, I got yeah. the call back and. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's so, when it all began. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you and I shot many times for my books, my books of, of uh, figure studies and portraits yes. and stuff. And yes. uh, I, I know you're in, in uh, a lot in volume two. You know. Yeah, I think I, I have two two or three pictures yeah, in there. I think you have and like at you, least three pictures in there. And some of them came actually from our... Uh, from the German from Playboy. From the German Playboy, yeah. Well, so you know what was interesting about that, Greg? And, and um, my my issue stood out for a couple reasons. Number one, it was a um, bestseller. And also, this is a really interesting factoid. Have you ever heard of the Bo Derek printout when printing a publication? No. Okay. So 
Hef decided because of the success that the Barbie twins had on their first issue with Playboy and they sold out in two weeks that he was going to again do that on my issue. So they they print double copies. Double run. Double run, right. And again, a bestseller. So I thought that was really interesting. That's great. Right. And the photos that we took for German Playboy, um, Zion National Park, we were on a bus, a big group of us, touring around. It was oh, we took a big motor home. Yeah, you we had a motor home. You Vegas. and Kim yeah. and my team. Yeah. So because it was perfect because we had hair and makeup, we had the assistants. Yeah. I mean, we had all everything we needed. We could have shot a half a dozen girls, but we had you, right. and Kim, right. And we toured around. We drove all through that. And see, that was Kevin. Kevin you, organized all that. He knew oh, all the locations he? and. You know, one of the most famous pictures you and I did was at Coral Pink Sand Dunes. That's one That's of my, my most favorite. famous uh, yeah. nudes of you. Yeah. And uh, we drove all over. Yeah. And I mean, God, we it was amazing. And then we rented a, a, a big boat on, uh, on Lake, Lake Powell. Powell. Yep. And went and shot you and Kim. And it was fun. I'd shoot you for a while, and then I'd shoot Kim for a while. I'd wear you out for a bit, and you could chill. <laughs> and then I'd shoot Kim for a bit. And, and it was really great having um, another female with us. Yeah. That a I, great gal. Yeah, that I could watch and kind of see what she was doing. I mean, because again, it was all completely new to me and being nude. I mean, I was very, yeah. I mean, I was very modest and I was like, yeah. I was scared as hell. Yeah. Um, you know, you, know so, you did, you covered it well because you didn't seem to be so scared. You were pretty I good. think once uh, after a couple of You know, of it's days, like, it's like with any of my male or female nudes, everybody's a little uptight before they get naked. But once the clothes are off, it's like, what the fuck? You know, right, and then right, they go right. for it and, yeah. and you know, it's not people after once you start nobody's new because it's okay here's the goods this is what it is it, yeah know, it is what it, it yeah. is and yeah everybody's doing their job and whatnot so then what was interesting back to my issue is that the um january 93 american issue they ended up using i think it was four of the pictures from the german playboy um um, layout that I did October 1992 for German Playboy and that was very very rare I mean you never saw that no they first... never usually ran the same pictures no. or one from the same series anyway right and then also just just the whole vibe look feel and the caliber of the photos were vastly different from what you would see in a typical layout for well, it was a different Playboy, point of view Playmate you know um, that was what Saskia saw which was really one of her uh Great insights why Saskia was so talented as a art director and creative director for Playboy magazine Germany is that she thought, you know, as opposed to have your photographers that their career is shooting, you know, Playboy nudes, because I shoot a lot of nudes, but it's still from a different point of view. Yeah. It's and I think she wanted that different aspect of photography as how it approached shooting a figure study as opposed to your typical, more clinical nudes that, all right, well, we got to see this. You got to turn this. I, I will tell you a funny, funny story. I did a cover. Uh, for Playboy with Sherry Belafonte, and we went down to, uh, this is so funny story, we went down to uh, Isla Mirada, Florida, mm -hmm. and we shot, and she had implants put in and the whole nine yards for the shoot, and we did amazing pictures. We came back and all this stuff, and she came back, we were happy, she took out the implants. I don't know if Sherry would be happy I told this story, but she's pretty <laughs> open, and, I, and she's one of my dearest friends to this day. Uh -huh. And she came back, and then they said, these pictures are great, Greg, but we need pink. We need pink. <laughs> <laughs> she so she had to put she pink. had to put the implants back in. Uh -huh. I brought in a Duratrans in my studio, uh, twenty thousand pounds of sterilized kitty play sand, and built like a tent and all this shit to shoot this other picture for Playboy. Wow! So and she had to put her extensions for the hair back in. I mean, it was a real pretty, real rigmarole. So know? she got her implants out and then she had to put yeah. them back in to yeah. finish the. Wow, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. That's a. But cool... we had so much fun. Yeah. It, it was wild. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who didn't have fun yeah. with you? Yeah. <laughs> You're legendary. You're the best. But it, no, but we had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the the pink sand dunes. That's one of my all time favorite pictures, and I remember that like that was yesterday. I mean, you literally. I don't remember. Maybe it was Kevin or one of the assistants, but just lowered me back and really lower you in and smooth ridge. the sand so we yeah. didn't lose the ridges and the lines yeah no that was, it was one of my very favorite and that's been you know one of my better uh selling nudes of all my nudes. people it? love that oh yeah that's done well that and then the one where i'm holding the i think it was an elk skull in santa fe oh the one in santa fe is at forest home which is yeah, beautiful that's one yeah. of my favorites i have yeah. those two frames there's one where you're laying on a tree branch out in one of those that, parks so that was the very first nude i took with you in bandolier in bandolier that's, that's right. right that's right that's right out by the uh yeah. Atomic plants or whatever. And when I look at it now, I can kind of see the tension in my face. Because well, it, it was the first, first on, time. You're balancing and I was on balancing a limb. on. <laughs> oh, yes. I was fully nude and I was yeah. laying on, you know, on bark. But it was on great. You know, that was back in the days when we did renegade shoots. You know, we rented the motorhome. 
we got our park permits, but we just would, we'd, oh, that looks like a cool location. We just, in there, close off, boom, take the picture and that. Right. Which was crazy. Yeah, you know? I do remember that. You're like, we got to go quick. Yeah, you, you were a master of doing that. So so what was so surreal and wild was, so first of all, when this all transpired with you, and I was told that I was going to be October 92 for German Playboy, and I was going to get paid 10 grand, I was like, oh my God, I'm rich. I was 18 years old. I was straight yeah. out of high school. I was moving to Austin. I was going to be a struggling college student. And I thought that was it. With I don't, it was pretty soon after we shot the German Playboy that I got the phone call, and I don't know if it was from you or from my mom, but that Hugh Hefner wanted me to be Miss January 1993. Do you remember any of that, of how no. that came about? And I've always wondered if it was like Marilyn Grabowski that saw the photos in the German Playboy. Probably Marilyn. Yeah. Yeah, probably Marilyn, but I mean, she was half a right-hand person. I love Marilyn. She was a wonderful person. I haven't yeah. seen her in years. I think she's still around. Still she actually us. lives in Corona Del Mar. She does. Yeah. She's great. I love I loved Marilyn. We had a great relationship. Yeah, I'm trying to get her on the show. So Well, she'd be hopefully. great. Give her my love. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. So, yeah, I always wondered about that. I didn't know exactly how that went No, I would say that came down. from Marilyn. Marilyn was kind of, you know, the director underneath Hef, I think. Well, no, she absolutely was. And I guess she just kept her eye on all the publications sure. and saw the, the German issue. And, yeah. And then so I was I was tasked with, um, OK, now you're flying to the Playboy Mansion and you're going to be Miss January 1993. And so it was literally in a span of just that summer, straight out of high school, that I shot German Playboy. Then I went to the mansion, shot my um, January 1993 centerfold. And I'll never forget, obviously, going to the mansion for the first time. And I'm um, in the main house and there's a bunch of girls there. They're testing, they're working, whatever, right? And first question you always get is, are you testing? And I said, no, I'm shooting my centerfold. And they were like, but no, you have to test. And I'm like, I don't know. All I've been told is I'm shooting my centerfold. I miss January 1993. There was another girl that was sitting at the table, and she's like, that's my month. And I was like, I have no, it, I, I have no idea. I was like, I've been told I'm not yeah. testing, and nobody understood it. But it clearly was because I had already shot the centerfold right. for German Playboy. So that was my that was my introduction into the whole right. world. And I mean, I. I my head was spinning. I was like, this is this is wild. Yeah. And then what, you know, what transpired from there was, I mean, I worked consistently with Playboy for almost 15 years. I, I know. 10 you're, covers a, you're the professional and... bunny. That's why we call you Echo Bunny. Yes. <laughs> for my, my nickname. Yes. For yes. Greg Gorman gave me the nickname Echo Bunny. That's where that yeah, comes from. That's so funny. And I use it to this day. Yeah. <laughs> Echo Bunny 93. So, yeah, it was uh, a super, super extraordinary time in my life and just so eternally grateful and here I am 30 years later and it's coming full circle doing this podcast yeah. um, you know reconvening with the Playboy family and just conducting really fascinating interviews and just learning more and more about the whole history of, of Playboy and, and you can keep Hugh your clothes Hefner. on and I get to keep my clothes <laughs> on now that you need to you look beautiful <laughs> so yeah it's been it's been quite a ride did you ever meet um Hef yeah you did what was your what was your take on him? I met him but we never really knew each other um I never really had a conversation about any of the stuff I shot I met him a few times with the girls I ran into him one time met him at uh met him a couple times at one of my favorite sushi restaurants he used to hold court sometimes at, at uh, Katana oh Sunset. yes with all and the girls and he'd have that center room and mm -hmm. it'd be a half a dozen girls with him yeah so I met him a few times I went to the mansion a couple times you know I think for Halloween parties or something but, yeah, the uh, Halloween but parties never were really the had any succinct conversations with him but Ma Marilyn I knew very well yeah Marilyn was definitely fond of you yeah. So I had no idea that you had actually shot with Playboy quite a few times. I thought it was just the Barbie twins. Robin and, and I did. Robin and I shot, actually, uh, I think Robin and I shot, I want to say we shot in Santa Fe, and then we shot in Mendocino. Really? And all that time, right around the times of all the separation with Tyson. With Tyson. So that was pretty wild. That's when yeah. I shot Robin. And Sherry, we shot in Florida, and Barbie twins at my home, I think. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple locations, but I think mainly at my home. We did mostly a lot of studio work. Interesting. Now, tell me about um, how many books do you have out? How many of your photography uh, books have 13. you published to yeah. this day? Thirteen. Yeah, thirteen solo books. Yeah. Wow. And what's the latest one that came out? Latest one's interesting. It's a book called Homage, um, which I shot during COVID when I couldn't really have people in my house, and I have a fairly substantial collection of African voodoo and fetish dolls and masks and whatnot and i bought considerably more during that time and i started photographing them in my kind of inimitable lighting style 
And it was tricky because I'd never done a still life. So then I realized, yeah, I don't know if this is enough for a book, uh, if it's that original. And so what I did is my creative director on most of my books, so I'm sure you've met Gary Johns. Mm. When I did the, my LA mm -hmm, Works campaign mm -hmm, with him. Mm -hmm. He shot, he calls it detritus, items in decay, and he did illustration and torn things and found objects and scanning. I said, take my pictures, throw them in the middle of your art, and let's see what happens. Interesting. And he said, why would I want to fuck up your art? I said, try it. And it came out really cool. So they look more like paintings. And the concept of the book is really how African tribal art has influenced European and American culture. So that's the latest project, completely unrelated yeah. to me shooting dick, pussy, and celebrity. Yeah, so it's vastly different. It's a completely different. different project. And it was a great, it was really a cool project. So that's the newest one. I didn't show you the book when you were at the house this you morning. Enjoyed it. You enjoyed uh, doing yeah. it and putting yeah, it all together. Yeah, they didn't together. talk back to me. I didn't have to feed them. <laughs> they didn't have to use the restroom. If I didn't like the picture, I could reshoot it. <laughs> Easy. And I had some that did talk back to me. You know, some of the voodoo dolls I took me I had to shoot them three or four times to get the <laughs> picture, you? which is wild. Yeah. Wow, how interesting yeah. is that? So that was the last project, most recent. Are you Are you still doing um, the workshops, or have you oh, kind of yes, slowed down of on that? Oh yes, of course I am. So, no, I just so finished. So where do you do them? Well, the next one is really a glamorous one that I. This will be the fourth or fifth year I've taught it up in the Dolomites in the northern part of the southern uh, southern Tyrol yeah. in Italy. Yeah. Really breathtaking, and I teach a workshop in Maine every year, which I've been doing for quite a few years with one of my sponsors, Fuji uh, Film Cameras, and I teach one uh, in the Berkshires, so a few different ones. Why um, Why did you stop going to Santa Fe to conduct your workshops? I haven't. Well, Reed's out of Santa Fe now. You know, he moved actually up to Maine. I don't teach with him in Maine, but uh, I, my God, I did more than 20 workshops, I'm sure, in Santa Fe. Did you? For all the years, yeah, and I would love to go back and do more in Santa Fe. I actually love teaching there. But, yeah, uh, I, I can imagine. It seems yeah, like I it's... love Santa Fe, and I always enjoy going back there, and I have a lot of dear friends that live in Santa Fe. It's a wonderful place. Yeah, it's it's grown quite a bit. I don't know when the last, last time is that you were there, but... It's been a while. I haven't been to Santa Fe for probably five or six years. It's popping now, that's for sure. Um, is there any other projects that you want to let the audience know about that you're working on beyond your um, workshops and then homage? Oh, where can people purchase your books? Um, well, that's a good question. Most of the books, I mean, a lot of the books can be purchased online if okay. you just Google. Okay. Uh, the latest book that probably would be, the book homage is really only available through the museums and gallery exhibitions because it was a limited run on that oh, book. Oh, cool. Okay. And, and the uh, uh, limited edition books can be purchased through me. Um, through my uh, website, which is just gormanphotography.com. Okay. And uh, most of the other books, the last big celebrity book I did, which is actually kind of one of my biggest retrospective books, you can get online through Amazon. It's called It's Not About Me. About oh, I love 400 it. 400 page book, big book. It's, and it's not about all me. just personality pictures, not my nudes and stuff. Is it all celebrities or all celebrities? All celebrities. All, all pretty big celebrities. I yeah. love that it's called "It's Not About Me." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's perfect. And as John Waters said, it's all about you because in the front and the back is a million pictures of me with all the talent over the years. You know, right, right, you right. You see right. me from going with a little bit more hair to no hair. So. <laughs> <laughs> it runs a time lapse. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, age, right? It happens to all of go. us. It is what it is. And what about you? We've talked a lot about me today. What is, what's on your agenda besides doing these podcasts and all this stuff? What have you been up to? Well, for the last 10 years, I have been in the field of aesthetics, and I um, have a skincare studio in Newport Beach, and been doing that and raising my daughter, and yeah, yeah just well, that's great. living my life and yeah, putting a lot of time and energy into this. This has been um, quite a project, and it's me, myself, and I doing it all, but it is definitely a labor of love. Sure. And, um, yeah, it's, well, these things a take a lot project. of work and a lot yeah. of re uh, a lot of uh, you know resourcing yeah. information. Stuff. You seem to have really done your homework on me today, which is <laughs> yes, makes of it course. easier for me. Of yeah. course, you come in and people say, "When did you? Where did you take your first photograph? How did you get into photography?" It's like you know, I've said that story a hundred times. You know, so, so it's nice times. to talk about different things. And I knew we'd have fun because we always joked and teased together. So what I did not know is that you um, that you went to USC and that's where you got your Master of Fine Arts degree in Cinematography. I had right, no idea. Right, right. That's kind of how it all started. I had uh, grew up in Kansas City. Right. And uh, I took my first picture of Jimi Hendrix back in 1968. That's a very cool and, uh, golden nugget I of history. I enrolled in photography school at KU, but the only thing they had was a, uh, courses in photojournalism. And it's ironic because I go back. I love Kansas City. You know, it's my home. And, and I go back every year and Thanksgiving and hang out with my buddies at the local Italian restaurant yeah. and uh, my friends from Jasper's. Which Jaspers. Is Jaspers. Yeah, they're just great friends of mine for all my life. Yeah. And my, our dads were best friends. And... Uh, 
I go back and spend like 10 days there every Thanksgiving, which I just love and, and oh, that's enjoy cool. the city. So I went to photojournalism school, but of course it was like, you know, ambulance chasing is not what I do. what you could do And so there. that's when yeah. I moved to California and went to film school, but I realized that my real love and real passion was still photography. What year were you at USC? 70 to 72. So this is something interesting that um, that we discovered in conducting these interviews. So um, there's a big endowment at USC, um, cens Censorship in Cinema, and it's um, the HMH Foundation. And um, Hef used to go in and teach classes a couple times a semester in the early seventies when um, when the when the whole class it's so funny or, that you say was this. instated. And yeah. I was thinking about that. And I was like, I wonder if you knew anything well, about yes. that. Yes. Uh, what's really ironic is I had a class on Thursday night at USC called. Uh, uh, Thursday night at the movies. Okay. And it was hosted by Arthur Knight, who wrote yes. the Sex in Cinema column yes. for Playboy. For Playboy, yes. Yeah. So yes. I took that course. And that's where I took one of my early, fairly well known pictures of Alfred Hitchcock because he came down and, and spoke and, and Orson Welles. It was oh, amazing. Wow, no Robert way. Altman. Oh, yeah, we had them all down there. And it was it was like such a fabulous class. I mean, you know, you yeah. have all these, you know, because Arthur knew all these people. We'd have all the newest movies and they'd have the either the star of the movie, usually the producer or the director come down and introduce the films. It was a pretty fabulous class to take. Wow, that is yeah. so cool. I'm so glad that I that I brought that up and um, had thought about that. Well, back you, in the day, they had it. great uh, instructors. I mean, we had Mort Zarkoff, who I think was connected to Twilight, the Twilight Zone. Uh -huh. We had all, uh, John Carpenter was uh -huh. teaching animation. So we had really incredible instructors down there back in those days. Yeah. Wow, what a time to be yeah. there. It was a great time to be at USC. Yeah. Amazing, very cool. Um, okay, so I want to, um, I end every show with, um, well, there's two questions, but we're only going to do one with you because the second one wouldn't apply. Um, and, and is there anything else that you want to mention before we... No, I think you've done a pretty good job. You know, definitely pimping out my workshops is great because yeah. I love teaching. Yes. And they'll all, all whenever, I, the only one that's now slated is for June 2nd to June 8th in the Dolomites. And it's and more than half sold out already, which is exciting because I only take it the, a maximum of 12 people. But I'll have workshops coming up uh, later in the year in uh, the Berkshires and okay. in Maine, which I've been doing every year, which is fantastic. It's just the most beautiful area. So a maximum of 12. And does it run the gamut, the kind of people that come to your workshops? Is it? Yes. I mean, it's mainly for me. The most important thing is that the, you know, it's not that they have to be, you know, totally advanced photographers, but they need to have a passion and they need to understand their camera, how to use a camera. Okay, but yeah, that was my question. Portraiture and nudes, I teach both. It's a combined okay. thing, yeah. Okay. For a week, week long workshops, yeah. Awesome, and that can be found on your website. On It'll be on the website. They're up there now. The new one I just we finished loading today for the one in the Dolomites, which is we're shooting these I'm old so jealous castles you're going and monasteries. There. I know all yeah, about that great. area. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful area. Stunning. That's... You know, and it's all about me. You know me. It's all about food and wine and and great gorgeous <laughs> models and great locations. It's uh, not that bad. The wine. We drink so much wine when we were you know, together. It's always. So, exactly. It's so funny. Uh, a couple nights ago, I was having dinner at Matsuhisa, and I ran into Michael J. Fox, who I hadn't seen in years. Uh -huh. And I used to shoot all the movie posters with Michael back in the day, and it was so lovely to see him. And he said to me, he says, God, I remember all those memories of drinking wine with you back, you know, in the early days of his early movies, like Light of Day and Secret of My Success yeah. and some of his early yeah. films. It was so great. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but you had, we, we had a video camera the whole um, week that we were traveling together through Zion for, right. uh, shooting for a German Playboy. And so I have two VHS tapes of all of that. Oh, and know. I'm like dying to get it transferred. I know, I've got them. If you get them transferred before I Because I know they're listen. hysterical. They're, they're hysterical. Right? And I, we were laughing so hard. We had that idiot that was on the, yes. that we won't discuss now. Yes. But it was just crazy. Yeah, I remember. But it just, was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, filled with uh, lots of wine at night, lots yeah. of laughter, and yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to one day um, uh, listening to those and yeah, going down memory lane. So okay, so we end the show with this question. Um, it'll be interesting to see what you say. Everybody says something Are you different. Me on the spot, yeah, a little bit. That's <laughs> uh, not too much. Okay, so um, too much. what are three words that would define Hugh Hefner to you? Smart, visionary. Yeah. Ahead of his time, but that's kind Absolutely. of the same as visionary. But yeah, I remember. This is a funny anecdote on Hugh. I can tell you, um, back in the fifties, and I would say around 
57, 50. I mean, I was eight or nine years old. So I you mean, remember lo- when the first issue? No, or but no, I remember cause... I remember loving Playboy magazine, and I would walk down to Mission Highlands grocery store from my house, and I'd say, I need a copy of Playboy magazine. And, and of course, you can't legally buy it at that age. Right. And so I'm buying this for my father. They'd sell it to me every year. So I'd go get my <laughs> buy my Playboy magazine. I just had them stashed under the bed back in the day. That's kind of a good story. That's, that a, true, is, that's a true story. Yeah, that's in the, very in the cool. late 50s. Very yeah. cool. So you were fond of it from the beginning. Oh, from the go. beginning, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those are good. Visionary. That's something that I always say about him, too. Um, all right. Well, those, yeah, that's the, that's, that's the last question. That's the story. <laughs> that's right, great. the story. So, um, again, to the audience, if you would like to know more about uh, Greg Gorman and his incredible career and just follow who he is and what he does, um, go to gormanphotography.com. And I would definitely encourage you to purchase um, his books. They are absolutely incredible. And I am just so honored and blessed to not only have had met you and established this beautiful friendship that we have um 32 years yeah but to have been featured in your books as well i mean just an absolute honor greg and it's it's honor for me as well so thank you you. i just can't imagine what my life would be like had i turned it around a little bit had you not had dinner at cafe escalera (laughs) that night just i know just that one thing i think it was absolutely meant to be so all right so we're gonna wrap up the show thank you so very much for coming in i really greatly appreciate it um to our fans out there please um don't forget to follow us like and subscribe subscribe to our youtube channel at the bunny chronicles you can also support the show on patreon at the bunny chronicles and we'll see you next week thanks for tuning in thanks